cataphract had been around for hundreds upon hundreds of years in Islam, um, all of those countries of Eurasia, further away from Europe, uh, they had this armored horse and heavily armored uh, warrior on horseback using long spears. And they would primarily use heavy cavalry. Now what I mean by heavy cavalry is shock tactics. Because if you two individuals would come up, any two of y'all, it doesn't matter. Okay, now for instance, if you'll hand me your sword, and you stand right there, you stand right there. Now, if I'm one person, and let's say they got three people. Now, if I am charging fast as I can make a lot of noise, and I can scare them and make them turn around, I can stab them in the back, I can cut them down, and it's a lot easier, even though my numbers are fewer. So heavy cavalry was basically shock tactics. So they would charge, charge forth their armored horses, their armored soldiers upon the enemy, make them scatter, and then chase them down and kill them. This cataract was around for a long time, as I mentioned. Now, this individual, Sam, representing the Muslim forces, they used the cataract to a great extent. Every single battle they fought, they didn't care where they fought. They didn't care how they fought. They knew that they were using cataract and they could completely, utterly decimate their enemy that way. They could kill their enemy very effectively. But the Muslim army did not know how Charles Martel of the Franks fought. He had no information. Now Charles and Martel, he only had foot troops. He only had basically soldiers that fought on foot. He did not have a heavy cavalry class. He had some riders, he had some scouts that were on horseback, but that's about it. And if one of y'all will hold up that inaccurately called chain mount, what he's going to hold up here is what you know is chain mount. However, what you see is historically inaccurate, it would be termed fantasy armor. Because <laughs> the metal that is used, you put it down. It's extremely heavy as well. That Thing alone weighs just as much as all of this plate armor weighs. It's that heavy. So it's completely historically inaccurate, but you get an idea. Historically, it was something called mail. That was it, not chain mail. Chain mail was invented more so along the 19th century when the Victorian era had the Renaissance and they were trying to bring back armor, they were trying to recreate different things. They called it chain mail. And so that term caught on, they still use it to today. But in the 8th century, that was primarily what they were wearing, is male armor. They had about 80 pounds of the armor, including all their weapons. And what they would do is they would stand in a long line. Charles Martel, a few two individuals would stand next to each other, shoulder to shoulder. Facing the... There you go. Okay. Now, if these individuals stand shoulder to shoulder, and they are holding shields in front of them, they are creating a wall. And that wall is called a phalanx. Okay, there you go. And that phalanx was a very, very good tactic. And Charles Martel, knowing that the Muslim army used the cataphract, heavy cavalry, decided to take his most veteran warriors and to set them up in the phalanx. Now, one man falls short during that phalanx. One man dies, and nobody steps up to the front line. Everybody will die. That entire wall is now broken and everybody can be killed because now there's an inlet. Now there's a road coming inside. So his veteran warriors knew this. They had a hold this line. Well, his warriors held the line. And on October 10th, 732 of the 8th century, the Muslim army charged towards their cataphracts upon the wall of Charles Martel. And guess who died? The Muslims, the cataphracts. They died because Charles Martel's army held strong. They did not allow themselves to fall and for a gap to be in the wall. They sent another wave of attack, another shock tactic wave, and again, Charles Martel's army defeated the Muslim army. And again and again this happened. Now, what, ha what is known for fact is that the next morning when the army was to renew, the Muslims were nowhere to be found. Now, what isn't known is why they fled. They fled so fast that in their encampment were all their tents, were all their gold, were all their treasure, all their valuables and clothing, where it was, they left it all behind. They didn't take anything with them. 
Now, the most interesting case that it makes for me, that it makes me say, yeah, that makes a lot of sense, is remember the Muslim commander didn't know that Charles Martel had no heavy cavalry. And so only using foot soldiers defeating the Muslim army, the idea is, is that Charles Martel sent a couple of scouts into the encampment where basically the Muslims would sleep where they had all their valuables. And he freed some slaves. They caused a little bit of chaos. Word got back to the Muslim commander. And then the Muslim commander, knowing he had been defeated using his best men on the field, knew that he stood no chance to go back and fight. So he fled. And that's just a theory. So thank you, gentlemen, for just making those representations for me. I have a question. Uh -huh. For me, this is counterintuitive. Okay. To think that a line of men with shields would be able to a charging armored horse. Oh yeah. That to me, I just I can't see that in my head. How are they able to stop a charge? Unless I missed something. No, no, you're right. A charging armored horse with yep. a big person on top of it. How is that possible? It is the reason why he used his veteran army because normal people would flee at the scene. They would run. However, Charles Martel with the Franks used the tip of the spear. It wasn't this long. It was longer, actually. You can see how these lingots kind of run down the pole X. What the Franks did, back then, at the end of a long stick, if this was just a stick, all you got to do is put a metal tip at the end, right? That's all. You don't need to have a long, a long uh, piece of metal on it. However, what Charles Martel, what his army did, is they took that piece of metal, they took that spear tip, and they ran it all the way down about three quarters the length of their spear. And then what they did is they put barbed wire on it. Not barbed wire like you think nowadays, but they actually wrapped it in barb. You see, if an opponent was stabbing the spear, they could, in essence, break the spear or pull the spear out. But what the Franks did with these long steel shafts, basically a steel shaft running down a pole, is you could not break that off. And with the barb, it would get stuck inside. Now, the male that you see here, historically, the armor would have been so amazingly woven that you couldn't even put a pin needle in. They've actually tested historical stuff. You couldn't even put a pin needle in. It was very effective. However, with the momentum of their horses running, which that's what they would have been wearing, is male armor. These individuals, is with their lines, it wouldn't have been one line of individuals. It would have been several lines of individuals. The horse is charging forward, it would seem very scary, it would seem very daunting. But these warrior veterans, they knew they could not flee because if they fled, they would be killed. So they had to stand that line. And as they stood that line, as the horses came, they used their spears. And what they would do is they would, in essence, land their foot in the ground, put the spear right here, and have their shield here. So as the horse is charging forward, the horse isn't the scary part. The scary part is the long spear, the long lances coming at them. Um, I, they made it sort of a, like a wall with like some sort of like, yeah, spikes coming out with the wall wire. Yep. Wire. Yep. So it seems scary because if you try to jump over, you're going to land on the ones out behind. That's right, because the individuals behind, they would have spears as well. The barbed wire would actually be on their poles, on their spears. They had long spears, and so more so the threat would be the long spears coming in at them. They had shields to try to help block that, but with all the momentum of the horse coming forward, the horse would ultimately die because of because of it getting stabbed. So really the threat comes in is the horse falling on it. And there's a lot, a lot of historical accounts where there are knights who were killed specifically from their horses falling on top of them, trapping them and suffocating them. So, so uh, a novice group of warriors would not have stood that test. Many, many times when Atlantic took up, they got scared, they fled. And so they had to be veteran tested, they had to be battle tested. So definitely a scary, scary sight to, to see nowadays. But in any case, as the Muslim army fled, there was horse armor on the